Let's live podcast after dark. Alongside Joe Giglio, I'm Joe Ovias, NC State. Eight wins in a row to get to the Elite Eight. Joe, I dabble. I dabble. I dabble with this stuff. But I do find it interesting that NC State has this thing sort of lined up. It's 50 years. This week, 50 years ago, NC State beat Marquette in 1974 to win the national championship. Coming up here relatively soon, Duke and Houston are going to play. Either way, we're going to get a hell of a matchup that has all sorts of historic ties to the triangle. And if Houston beats Duke, well, would you look at that? What's facing NC State and the, you know, what's what's holding NC State away from the Final Four is the team they beat in 1983 for the national championship. Sometimes things work out a funny way, and it worked out tonight for NC State as they beat Marquette. Um, they took Marquette's defensive adjustment. They took Marquette. And, and their own struggles uh, in the second half. They still found ways to get to the basket. They found ways to get rebounds. Um, and something that you and I talked about that I thought was interesting was how the whistle was going to go for NC State. And once again, the whistle was somewhat beneficial for the Wolfpack, and they're off to the Elite Eight. You know what's wild, Joe, is, is we can talk about numerology and written in the stars and how improbable it is that NC State has won eight basketball games in a row now. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, the way that they're playing, the only thing fluky about the entirety of this eight-game stretch was one shot from Michael O'Connell. Yeah. The rest of it has been, and I will say this, and I keep saying this, they stay on schedule, they play with confidence, they play with a desperation and urgency and a hunger. The duh scale, the Gilio duh scale, each game. So for me, the real test for them will come when they do fall behind. What happens when they get off a schedule? Because right now, they're flat out outplaying teams. Yes. And I, yeah. I actually thought this was a good matchup for them. I actually loved Shaka and his unintentional smugness as I see the comments over here. When are you guys <laughs> when hey. are you guys printing a not close shirt? Hey, man. I, hey, man. I, I I tweeted out at halftime when NC State was purely in control. I just did like a cropped shot on Shaka's face from Jared Fialco's question about the job back in 2011. And sure enough, you know, I, I had this thought. Everybody else has had this thought. One of our listeners immediately tweeted it, and I'm just going to play it. Not close. Hey, yeah, man. Not close. Game was not close. I mean, they get a little bit close there in the second half. But for the most part, NC State was in control. To your point, they've been in control throughout these games. And, and they keep winning the same way, Joe. I mean, Modiara has been amazing on the glass, and he kind of proves that when you know your role and you excel excel at your role and accept your role, everything else becomes gravy. He had nine rebounds in the first, like, four minutes of this basketball game, finishes with 15, has 11 points. All of those points become gravy, though. Uh, and we saw at stretches when they needed it, DJ Horn be the bus driver in this mm -hmm. game. One notable difference in this game, and I thought – Honestly, I thought Marquette would struggle with DJ Burns. Truth of the matter is, they did a good job on him um, if you just don't account for those seven assists. And I thought in the first half, Burns was their best playmaker. He has that ability. And while they were doing that, they were just defending, 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 holding a Marquette team to under 60 points. You know, I I'll do it for the rest of the people here, or maybe I'll let Hayes Perma, our, our friend, do it. But like, where are you now, Seth Davis? <laughs> where where are you now, Mike DeCourcy? Like th these are your fucking boys. This is Marquette. This is your guy Shaka. Yeah. Like yeah. this is the Big East. This is the big bag. The big bad Big East. NC State just put it in their ear. Like g bring some real competition. Oh, Joe. Joe, the NCAA tournament results do not retcon anything that happened in the oh. regular season, Joe. They, remember okay. the NCAA tournament results do not matter. In fact, the person who the, any team that wins the NCAA tournament, frankly, we, we have to put it in perspective because did they look good on Warren Nolan's you're, sheet? You're, you're right. You're right. Did what did they do in the Bahamas? The battle yeah. for Atlantis yeah. is the real true champion. And it's, it's cool that UConn <laughs> might win the national championship. Yeah, it's yeah, cool. yeah, they yeah. Might do it. But did they do what Iowa State did in the non-conference? I don't no. think so, Joe. No. I don't think so. No, you're right. We did get a text from our friend Hayes Permar. Uh, it reads like this. Does someone have a camera? I want to get on the Ovias and Gilio Twitter. Guy who just bought a bottle of champagne. 
at the Rialto. First off, Hayes Perma from the Rialto uh, joining us now on the Heaser Automotive Group Hotline. Um, where is everybody? I thought you'd be like in the pit still celebrating with everybody. They, they took off. They're going streaking to the bell tower. Okay. I mean, they're, they're, gotcha. there's like a bell tower chant. We had it going on. We had wolf pack chants going on. We had uh, the fight song was being sung. It was great. First yeah. of all, though, the course and all those guys are being proven right. Okay. This is just the top heavy ACC. Yeah. Going, this is the yeah. multinational champion <laughs> NC State. You're right. It's yeah. just. It's just UNC and NC State and Duke, as always. Just and nobody Clemson. else. Don't forget about Clemson. Nobody from the bottom of the ACC ever does anything. It's all these top-heavy, the, the regulars, you know, the national title, uh, perennial favorites like NC State. No, yeah. it was a it was a great crowd. In fact, I'm willing to say after last night's crowd, uh, now it was a Thursday night and it was 10 o'clock for UNC. Mm-hmm. Vibes were immaculate for NC State. Like after seeing them both. I'm wondering if UNC fans weren't taking it a little bit for granted that they had at least one more game. Like they were looking ahead to a possible Clemson matchup. They saw Clemson win and they thought it was all set up for the ACC to do well. I did get a little bit nervous when homie came to the bar with five minutes to go in the game. It was like, do you have champagne? And I was like, <laughs> we do, but, and he was Just- like, no, no, no. He was like, and, and this even before he said the Ovis and Julio stuff. So then he's carrying around the bottle of champagne and like unwrapping it, and then the lead like shrinks to five, and it's like, dude, buddy, you are you're about to be Bartman. Like, if anybody sees that you bought champagne no, no, early, no, Hayes, Hayes, I do, NC State shit's dead, dude. No, NC State shit's dead. I, uh, I and there's the proof, man. Tournament. There is the proof. The, there was exact I, the minute they reversed that foul. I'm like, <laughs> do you believe me now? The, yo, the, the reverse me? foul call was something else. But no, I had long time. NC State fans with like you can they walk around visibly with their scars and these guys still with like three minutes ago the lead was shaking they're like nah we're in control we're good uh th- this is a confident bunch both on the court and in the fan base for sure do you uh do you guys want to have a party on Sunday maybe yeah so do we know what time the game is on Sunday do we know uh, yet I I don't does it matter usually like if if well, we're if, old now Hayes. When Duke, if Duke wins, then it'll be whatever, you know, the TV time for Duke is going to be, right? That's like true. you're going to get That's the Duke true. TV time. If not, it might go to the, uh, the other guys, but um, let's get that Easter dinner out of the way and come party the Rialto. <laughs> uh, do you have an ethernet cable we can plug into? That's the question. I've got so many cables. I wish you could just see over here. Like I've got cables from like the sixties running over this place. Oh, we'll find you an ethernet. Sure. I've got one of these bad boys. Hold on, I was trying to. Well, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. An old school well, roadcaster. Yeah, road Let's, go. Let's go. All right, man. All right. So, so tell, tell you what. I think uh, I think Adam over at Breeze Through will let us borrow the 200-yard Ethernet cable that will run around an entire gas station and car wash, and I think we can run at the Rialto. So do we, we, we want to do something Sunday. Joe, you can be back from the beach on Sunday. We can do this? I'll be back. Yeah. All right. You got champagne for us to drink while we're doing the show, Hayes? Didn't we just learn, like, let's not open the champagne (laughs) early. Just for us. We'll have some ready. Can a man man have bottle service? I'm just saying. It was pretty cool to then quickly, we we, we waited to see if there was a post-game interview, but then we switched over to the NC State women, and they're closing things that we didn't get to see as much in that game because we only have a a single screen. But as soon as we threw it on, they were like, yeah, let's go. All right. NC State shit is done. They all win. It's all winning all the time. All right, man. Well, uh, we we will be in touch. We will uh, we'll be doing something from Rialto on Sunday, hanging out. It's it's gonna be free on Sunday too. Yeah, we'll just open the doors, relax, rules, bring a pizza if you want. Just, just buy, buy our beer, buy yeah, our beer and popcorn. Obviously, and, buy uh, beers, obviously. And uh, and yeah, come watch the pack. All right, man. We will talk to you later, and you we'll, we'll be in touch. We'll set something up for Sunday, so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, that's Hayes Permar, the Rialto. We're gonna be there on Sunday because why the hell not? It's gonna be an interesting game, one way or the other. We're gonna have either NC State or Duke, or NC State and Houston, and the vibes will be feeling like eighty-three, one way or the other. So there's this comment from Red Mage 138. The kids are out in the neighborhood chanting. It's magical out here. When I got in the car, there was about like a minute and change left. My neighbor, Brandon, had probably his entire cohort from when he was at NC State hanging out. And I just heard, DJ Burns, hell yeah! <laughs> and then I have another neighbor in the backyard who, I don't I don't know their names. They, they live next door to neighbor Rick, who's a state guy. And they were clearly watching the game outside. I heard them freaking out, obviously. 
And as I pulled up here on Fayetteville Street to get to the studio, you could hear, you know, the street buzzing and, and everything else. And it is it is kind of interesting. It, Joe, even Theo Pinson is like, yeah, man, even even I got to admit that NC State's playing pretty well right now. And I guess there is something this is this is something that you and I have talked about for a while as it relates to NC State. Nobody wants NC State to be bad, you know? Things are better when NC State is engaged. The whole triangle is better when NC State and Carolina and Duke are engaged and playing at a high level. And if you didn't believe me before, just look at how everything is vibing right now, and maybe now you'll believe me. Uh, and, I, and, I, and again, the thing that I keep getting back to with NC State, and, and I go back to how we talked about NC State going into the ACC tournament, and even out of the first game of the ACC tournament, you've brought up that term, hunger, want, and things like that. Whatever their issue was before, and I've and I've caught I've caught Kevin Keats even saying this when he's referenced the scouting report when people have asked him about, hey, you know, what what do you attribute this run to? And he's like, they're really just locked in and paying attention to the things that we're pointing out, and they're executing. You know, it's the antithesis of what Hubert Davis talked about last night when they got bounced by Alabama, where he says games like this down the stretch come down to who makes those plays, and I think that's the part that people are still processing. You're so accustomed to watching NC State not make these plays down the stretch to see them consistently do it over an eight game win streak. We're all processing in real time. It's also, Joe, this is how this team was put together. When you mm -hmm. see KC Marcel scoring 15 points and really being, a, a, you know, a supporting scorer the way that he was on last year's team, that's what his role was supposed to be this year. And it's what it has been for most of these eight games. Mike O'Connell is another guy who, because Jane Taylor is dealing with an injury and, and can't play as many minutes as they would like him to, O'Connell has played more. He has stepped up in his mm -hmm. production. He also, even though he had four turnovers today, he he takes care of the basketball, doesn't do anything dumb with it. And he does seem to excel, as Grant Hill pointed out, in those shots at the end of the shot clock. So, uh, you know, what's wild to me, Joe, it is not how people I, I think it's awesome the way that people in Raleigh are reacting. I sure. do state fans of a certain age, anyone under 40, anyone under 45, they don't remember 83. They don't really remember the last time state was relevant. No. So to me, what's wild is is, is something my son James said uh, earlier tonight. He goes. You realize if Jim Nance hadn't retired, Jim Nance would be talking about NC State. You know, I'm watching soft features on, on DJ Horn and his family. I'm watching DJ Burns get all the love that he should be getting from, from the national and CBS types. I'm watching Grant Hill being like, yeah, you know, these guys are, are playing at a different level. Mm -hmm. And and they, they're kind of sort of referencing 83, and they, they talked about 74. But the truth of the matter is, you know, this team was put together to play this way. And it's taken this long for them to figure out how yeah. to play this way and put all of those parts together. But that's what they've done. And, and that's kind of, to me, the remarkable part of it. It's not a this is not a miracle heater. They're on a heater. They're on but a it's heater. not a miracle heater. Mm -hmm. and, and defensively, again, you hold Marquette to 58 points. You put in a day's work. Marquette, it was weird. I'm going to pull up the uh, the stat broadcast. Thanks to Patrick for letting me know the yes. super secret password to, to get into this thing. I'm pulling up the stat broadcast, and the wild part about Marquette tonight was just how awful they were from three. Four of 31, Joe. That's not what Marquette has been all season long. Uh, not that I spent a lot of time watching Marquette basketball. Not a lot of us spent a lot of time watching Marquette basketball, but when you start to get into what this game is going to be about, you see what Marquette is ultimately about, and they were discombobulated. Some of this is on NC State. I get that. NC State um, has been a team has that, that we've talked about. They have to play a certain way. They have to play a defensive way in order to stay in these games, to be the aggressors, to show that hunger. But, and Sometimes I get we, we get a little too caught up in like, oh, man, look what NC State was doing. I didn't think that NC State was doing too much on Marquette. Marquette was seeing some open shots, and they were just not going in. And I'm thinking to myself of times in which Kevin Keats is set at PNC Arena, and people have asked him, hey, what do you attribute a bad shooting night from beyond the arc? You know, what were they doing defensively? 
and Kevin Keats is straight up said, and I and I was with him on this. They weren't doing anything in particular. The shots just were not going in. And that was happening to Marquette tonight. And NC State took advantage of it. And when Marquette did find some adjustments, I thought defensively in the second half, they did a good job of getting uh, NC State off course. They stopped just jacking up threes and going to the rack. They had some success with that. They got to the line a few times. What were they from the free throw? They were 14 of 23. That's another thing. Free throw awareness month, folks. You got to make your damn free throws. NC State was 6 of 12, which made things interesting down the stretch, obviously. But the but Marquette gets to the line 23 times. They only make that 14 times. So there was a concerted effort to get to the line, and they were even missing that. All of this is to say that even when Marquette did find some moments where they can get this thing tight, NC State found a way to hit a, hit, hit a big shot. DJ Horn at a buzzer, hitting a three, and then blowing a kiss to Marquette fans, right? There, this is something that has been consistent in this run, too. I think Brownlow tweeted it that NC State has consistently found run stoppers, right? Where a team is finding a way to get back into it. Mike O'Connell might hit that big shot. DJ Horn might hit a big shot. Maybe DJ Burns gets a three-point play or something like that. They have consistently done that. And when you be when you believe it, when when that confidence is there, like I jokingly tweeted out, yes, you know, when we're at the Sweet 16 talking about triangle basketball. It's all playing out like we predicted a month ago. NC State is the team playing with the most confidence in March, just like we all predicted a month ago. We all thought it was going to be North Carolina. They did not look like that in the second half against Alabama. Instead, it's State tonight against Marquette. Can I pick on an old subject without you getting irrational with me for one for one second? This is funny coming from the irrational person, but go ahead. I, I get that, but can I just give you a quick stat? Yeah. Please. So NC State, this is their first time in the Sweet 16 since 1986. Okay. Mm-hmm. It just so happened that year that Duke went to the national title game. Okay. So if Duke were to lose tonight, NC State has outlasted Duke in the NCAA tournament once since 2012. Okay. In 2012, when Duke lost to Lehigh, the commercial that Coach K unwittingly signed up for. There's no fucking way that guy signed off. On CJ McCollum dotting him again. I need to do, we didn't do like an oral history on that commercial that has yes. Mike Krzyzewski talking about, you know, commitment and the army and all this other stuff. And, and getting and, dotted by CJ McCollum and, and Leon. McCollum is right uh, there. Uh, it's very confusing. But anyway, so I think CJ McCollum's family has a military background. Yes. But, yes. Um, yes. I, I'm laughing because State has outlasted Duke in the tournament exactly once <laughs> since 12. Do you realize the last time they were outlasted both Duke and Carolina in this tournament was 1983? Okay. Does, does that not the tough neighborhood, Joe? Just the just does it not? Okay. Does it not give me one little check mark for the tough neighborhood? I'm not asking for the definitive uh, uh, vote of, of confidence, but just just give me the one check mark. It's been since fucking 1983. Since NC State outlasted both Duke and Carolina. Carolina yeah. by themselves, 83. Yeah. It would be both 83. Come on, man. Sure. That's tough. That's that's tough. When Even when you are good, 15, yeah. State gets to the Sweet 16. Oh, yeah, what happened that year? Yeah, Duke won the whole thing. Yeah, because that explains <laughs> last year, right? When no, none of them were around. Five, uh, you know, State, Sweet 16. Oh, yeah, Carolina won the whole thing. It's just mm. one of those things, man. It's just one of those things. It's funny. Okay. It's yeah, I mean, cool. look, the, you're on your Tyreek Hill. It's cool. I'll let you have it for now. Yeah. Go if ahead. Only. <laughs> if only. If hey, only. Did you see the Chiefs signed a rugby player from I Wales? Saw that. I saw that. I saw that. that the, but you look, man, you know my issue on these types of things. Basically, that is excuse making as though all of your issues are not within your own control. I you yeah, know? I get I get that portion oh. of it. I do get that portion of it. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, cool. NC State in North NC State has to deal with North Carolina and Duke. That doesn't explain why they don't make the damn tournament, you know, as though they're the only teams that they play. But, but that's cool. the, that, that's the, the coincidence of state's good years going with Duke or Carolina's championship years. Yeah. Is a little bit it's a little bit hard to ignore. Come on. Well, come I, on. I think I think that uh, here's the thing though, and I, I think this is where I think this is where you and I, I said this after the ACC tournament and and for folks who are just tuning in and shout out to everybody who's watching on the live chat, 
um, in, in the live YouTube chat and everything else. We'll get to some of those comments. And if you haven't thrown a like on the YouTube yet, please do. It helps with the algorithm, helps with discoverability. Throw a follow if you haven't yet. You know, it's uh, we're having a good time. Don't get me wrong. I'm, we're actually at the point where I can probably drink straight from the Colonel Taylor at this point. So I might do that. I tried to save it for you. I tried. Okay. It's well, just I mean, too good. It's just it's too good. good. Colonel Taylor's fantastic. Anyway, let's go back to let's go back to, to Washington, DC, right? And I said this, I, I think I said this on the Sunday night after the selection show when we did a show on Sunday night. And I said, I don't think we've fully processed what NC State did at the ACC tournament. Okay. And what it means. Um, what it means to get over the hump, what it means to truly stuff the stuff, as Kevin Keats once said, and he actually finally did when they won the ACC championship. And I understand where NC State fans come from. Um, you know, we talked about this with BJ Barham, uh, American Aquarium, after they won the ACC championship. And he got his tattoo and he's he's got his daughter and he's, and he's you know, witnessing something he has not witnessed in his lifetime and things like that, or, you know, since 1987. And you're trained, right? You're trained as a fan to expect the worst. Are you, uh, which which kid are you asking for a drink there? Um, well, Jackson just walked back in, but the the boss actually just walked in too. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I heard you. I overheard you telling Jess that the whole reason why we're here, anyway, is because we were the sacrifice. Yes. Yeah. I, I, someone had texted Jessica and said, "What was the parking spot where you buried the, uh, you did the bottle and you know, your ceremony?" And I believe it was 190083. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what it was. And I think now that it's coming true, people mm -hmm. are have to remember we did burn the jacket. We did from personal fouls. We, no, we, we burned we that did, jacket. Did we burn the jacket or did we burn the incense around the jacket? I, I know we, we burned the box. Oh score no, we from burned Omaha. the box score from Omaha and we yes. did sacrifice the the jacket yes. so yes. and we drank the, the clemson because we thought it would be a football curse but right. hey maybe that's coming too but Who again knows? people the best way for you to thank us is uh, support the og yes. do all the things that you could possibly do and thank everyone already for doing that we've had our best month ever go figure we have we have now where was i oh processing what we've seen i get what you're trying to do but I think what NC State is doing right now is beyond anything oh, that yeah. you try no to no court, right? This is, you know, again, we're doing this in real time. So I want people to kind of bear with me here because we're yeah. all processing this in real time. NC State fans have been asking, wanting a championship of some sort. What was the dumb stat that you always broke out about NC State? And like mm -hmm. they were like the one power five team to have not won anything conference wise in how long? Yes, in this century. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Players come and go. Players come and go. But fans, it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. And it actually makes me think about something that Scott Wood talked about when you guys did the show earlier in the week. And he's like, state fans are so negative. Well, if you're Scott Wood, you know, you're playing. You're not there the entire time. You haven't been living it since you were a kid. You don't have a family member who has been like living and dying by NC State for so long. So you're just trained to be negative. I've always maintained that PNC Arena during a basketball game, there is no building that I've been to that sounds stressed the way that NC State sounds stressed when things start to go wrong, right? I would just that, I would no, just clarify that, one point though. I they're trained to expect the worst. Yes. Not be not necessarily be negative. Yeah, and but that all kind of feeds into it. Yeah. So it was, that's why I always thought it was kind of like unfair to Elliot Avent as though him and the baseball team breaking through is going to be the thing that showed you that, no, I, I never really believed that. It had to be basketball because basketball was the thing that people were clinging on to for the longest time. And now that they've broken through it, now that they've won the ACC championship, there's no other dumb mental block in your way. That's right. huge, man. Now, yeah. fans, fans are going to still think that. You know, like we were joking about with Hayes, that this guy bought a bottle of champagne with five minutes to go, and you're like, whoa, 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 hold yeah. up, hold up. I had people getting on my ass because I had tweeted out like about NC State shit being dead. It's like, do y'all believe me now? And they're like, hey, wait a minute. There's like a minute 30 to go. The game's not over yet. Y'all, stop it. But I get that it's hard to unwind that. I mean, I'm seeing some comments um, in here uh, about, 
you know, from like Julian. I mean, I'm starting to believe now. What a magical ride. Never been so proud of to be an alumni. Also, shout out to ladies. Go get them, girls. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the women were down 10 and come back and win by 10. I mean, yes. But there was another comment here. Um, there was another comment here about how, like, yeah, man, like it's taken me a while to finally come around to this idea. It's hard. It's hard for people to understand that sort of stuff. So I, all of this is to say is that once you break through, once it's out of the way, once it's no longer hovering over you, then things can kind of come easy to you, right? You have that breakthrough. We see this with athletes all the time. You see it. I mean, hell, I'll even break it down to my own kids playing hockey, right? Not to go like full hockey dad on it, but like Not once without the jacket, sir, I know I don't have the jacket on me, but you know, once Jacob scored a couple of goals, it was like the weight was off, man. Oh, okay, cool. I'm not, I'm not gripping the stick so tight just to try to score goals and it, it, it's all good. So I think the same thing's happening with NC state in general. They're not gripping so damn tight. The fans aren't gripping so damn tight. Because, holy crap, they're finding ways to win. That's why I say I don't think we've fully processed what this run potentially means for Kevin Keats going forward. All right, I know Luke DeCock wrote about this. And it's something that I think we'll have to really explore once the season eventually comes to an end, whenever that happens. Kevin Keats is locked in, right? He is locked in. There's no more questions about his job after this. None. Even if they have a setback next year, does not matter. It's locked in. You know how big that is to not have that loom over you, to not have that sort of thing kind of gnawing at you, questions about it? Because what's the questions is going to be answered with, well, they just did this. His contract extension is kicked in. He's in. So the question then becomes, what can you do to support it? So I think this is all kind of coalescing together and we're kind of into this weird unknown territory for Wolfpack athletics that we haven't seen in the last 40 years. I know I'm kind of rambling. I'm kind of tired. It was a late night last night, but I think I'm making some sense in how we're processing what NC state is doing right now, getting to the elite eight. Yeah. The only thing I would say is, you know, before the Red Sox broke through, it was the Patriots in one. Yes. And there was a little bit of a release there for Boston area fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think you, when you go back to Elliot Ava and those college world series appearances, there's a, a release, but of course, one of the times it's Carolina there to eliminate them technically. Yeah. yeah. And then the other time it's the NCAA there to technically eliminate them. Everybody. So, uh, so that, that only adds to it. Right. And then Wes Moore with the success that he's had in winning the ACC three times. That is a little bit of a release. And you you kind of, you know, the football success, while not a, a conference championship, is a little bit of something. But this is now a fully, you know, I remember, heck, I remember the last time the tournament was in D.C., which was 16. Yeah. And yeah. I wrote a story yeah. about, um, about that was where NC State had won their last ACC title. And I talked to Chris Corciani, and he said, you know, in 1989 – we didn't even celebrate the regular season because that's not what was a thing mm -hmm. at the time in the league. He's like, so if we had known now what we knew, you know, if we'd known then what we know now, we would have at least celebrated. And I remember talking to Chung Yi, who we've seen a lot of behind the bench again. He's like the star of CBS. And he, one of the things that he said to me in 2016 that will always stay with me is I live in the triangle. I work in the triangle. I have Carolina friends. I have Duke friends. I just want to be able to snap back. I just want to be able to clap back. And when you have a title, that allows you to clap back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you saw this, and we can talk a little bit about this now with Carolina fans. I thought Carolina was going to go to the Final Four. I honestly did. Yeah, yeah. And when they lost last night, you know, a lot of state fans were, were ready at the, at the trigger with, well, I thought well, I thought when we won, you know, I thought when you guys lost the ACC title, that meant you were going to automatically go to the Final Four and win the national championship. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, they tried to they tried to talk down the state fans after. Oh, look at you! You're so cute. You finally won the ACC, and but that's good. the 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 back and forth is good. You but you have to have accomplishments to have the back and forth, and I think that's what this this run is doing for NC state fans. 
Now they go into football season. I obviously, I honestly think they will lose to Tennessee, but so what? You yeah. know, you, you don't have to sit there with the gloom and doom all summer of, oh man, what's going to happen when we go to Charlotte and play an SEC team? Who's going to return the opening kickoff? How quickly is this thing going to be over? You don't have to have that mentality anymore. No. It doesn't have to be your mindset anymore. And that is the beauty of what NC State's doing. And whether they're doing it for their fans at this point or not, it doesn't matter. Because as you said, this solidifies Kevin's position. This solidifies DJ Burns's position. This solidifies something I've been asking for for the last 10 years. God bless the 74 team. God bless the 83 team. What they did was the 74 team is arguably the greatest team in the history of the ACC. Mm -hmm. The 83 team created March Madness. But NC State, on an annual basis, does not need to celebrate those two teams. They can let those teams breathe a little bit now and let let these new crop of players be celebrated. Let's hear from, you know, let, let I can't wait for Pac, my, I'm sorry, I can't wait for my podcast, <laughs> Law of the Wolf, oh, to have DJ Horn and DJ Burns and, um, you know, Mike O'Connell and the players yeah. from this current crop of stars. That's what I can't wait for. So that's the best part of this for NC State and their fans. So I had pulled this up, Ethan Hyman, over the news in Missouri. You, you brought up Chung. I had to pull this up because Chung's front and center on this crowd shot from uh, from Dallas. Look at the look at the joy on his face. I know, I know. Look at the joy on, his, at the joy on that man's face. I love that. I don't see Steve John Nunnally there too. Yeah, I see Nunnally in the house as well. Good to see him uh, him clapping as well. Um, it's kind of funny. My brother texted me he says he's been doing this for every game i don't know if i believe him or not but he did text me uh flights from orlando to dallas he's considering it for tomorrow i don't know if he'd get to uh oh for tomorrow for uh for yeah uh for uh wait what today for sunday i mean to get to get down there on uh on sunday first thing in the morning watch some basketball and then head on back so he's considering it he's considering it why would you why we wouldn't go to, you? We go to Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we might have, <laughs> we might have to call it another favor with Greg, but you know. Um. Well, <laughs> I won't go. You go. Uh, gotta keep we both have to go. <laughs> no, we gotta keep. We gotta stay consistent. We road trip. Oh God, no! Tudor has I? an unbelievable story. They never came back. By the way, in '83. What do you mean? They they stopped in Reno. So back in '83. State was in Corvallis, then they were in Ogden, Utah for the the tournament, right? The final four was in Albuquerque. So the Raleigh Times never bought them home. Oh, God. They stayed out. And remember, the regional final was Virginia and State. So pretty much everybody who was everybody in 1983 who covered ACC basketball for a newspaper. And let me tell you, sir, in 1983, that was a lot of people. They stayed out west. They went to Reno. Oh, geez. Because Leonard Lay had a hookup. Leonard Lay, the old uh, Charlotte Observer editor, had a hookup in nice. Reno. And Albuquerque, they, they were there, buddy, man. Sometimes Ross Martin asks us, what was what was it like in the in the real days? <laughs> Think about that. They left, they left from Atlanta after state won the ACC tournament to go to Corvallis, Oregon. And did not come home until the day after the championship in Albuquerque in April. From uh, from RL, I have an RV. You could drive to Phoenix. I don't know. I have, I have to consider it. I mean, I've been wanting to do. I want to do a. Uh, I want to do a show from my buddy's boat on a lake. But who's to say we can't do it from an RV? Right? We're not getting credentialed. Yeah, I, 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 that was my query to you. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't love our chances of a credential. You know. I'm sure, I'm sure we can ask, but at the same time, it would also be fun. Again, it would be fun to be uh, hanging back here if something like that were to happen. Uh, it actually reminds me of a story that Tony Rigsby, uh, who I used to work with, uh, Durham Bulls PA announcer, used to be at WPTF. He did not go in 1983 to to travel around. He was he was around here. And he told me the story that they went to the brickyard. You know, this is back when radio had like vans, like mobile yeah. vans back in the day. Yeah. And the party got so out of hand in 1983 that they're on the brickyard 
and um, he had the window down. They're trying to get some natural sound. And a student, a younger fan, somebody was drunk and had whipped it out and was about to take a whiz in the car with the window down. And his colleague who was with him was like, Tony, roll the window up, roll the window up. And he looks over and he just sees junk getting ready and he rolls the window up. Again, back in the day, you have to roll windows up really, really quick to make sure that it did not get in the car. I feel like we can probably have a similar situation. Don't you think? I'm up for it, man. I mean, we can make it work. We can like stop at like the world's biggest ball of yarn and do a show from the ball of yarn. We, we could do stop, that. Like we could stop in the at the Mississippi and spit into the river just for our Tar Heel friends. It's true too. But you know they're they're wishing all NC State people the best of luck. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you name it, we can do it. Or we could just go to the Longleaf and hang out and drink fancy bourbon while we do the show. Uh, that's another thing that we could do. Uh, <laughs> RL with a very good point. The Ethernet is only <laughs> 2,200 miles long. <laughs> Might not make it. I don't know. I think Adam over at Breeze Through can come up with the Ethernet cable. That is uh, that is big. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, it, Michael is correct. I did see Bobby Bowden's junk at one point in my career, too. So, look, at some point in sports, you're going to see somebody else's junk. Isn't that true, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to Chris Clark, who once interviewed Yagmir Yager for uh, Metro Networks, AP Networks, while he air dried. <laughs> it happens, man. <laughs> At least he took a shower, man. <laughs> this is some, true. some of the Euros don't, don't exactly believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris always loves telling us stories. Like, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to keep eye contact with Yager while I'm trying to get some sound for the networks to do stringer work back in the day. And he's just there, air drying it out. Hey, man. Who hasn't? Uh, all right. From Mike, uh, got my wife to sign up for the DraftKings using the promo code OG24. She's up 160 bucks tonight. We love We're here it. for the people. We love to hear that. I don't know if you put this up on the screen yet, but NC State is 8-0 since gambling has gone legal in the state of North Carolina. Yeah. No, this is me hydrating. The blue, the blue is hydrating. Yeah. What are you drinking tonight? You had a Guinness earlier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got one of those. In a Clemson cup, I'm down at my sister's beach house, and somebody who stayed here bought a Clemson cup. Okay. So I always use it. You know me; I love the Tigers. Plus, they're the Tigers are repping. Clemp is repping, man. man. I mean, Brad Brownell coached a hell of a freaking game against Arizona the other night. Uh, for Matthew, if Duke loses tonight, you all should make sure it's to say the ACC is top heavy with Clemson State's logos on the top <laughs> with the other 13 schools on the bottom. I mean, Bradlow and I talked about that a little bit yesterday uh, in relation to how everybody nationally seems to just be rooting for the ACC to fail. I don't think it's a perception thing. I actually do think that this is the case. Um, I mean, hell, like Dan Wolken, who for whatever reason chose violence against Hubert I mean, Davis last night. This morning. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so confused. But and then tonight he, he must have felt left out. He must have felt left out. Tonight he was tweeting as though he was a beat writer for Marquette. You know, like actively looking at things from Marquette's point of view. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very strange, man. All right. So we got Houston and Duke live right now. Uh, Houston's up 10 to 7. Um, I know we have some Duke fans that were like, I thought you guys were going to go live at halftime of this game. You know, plans change sometimes. Um, and I, I do think that this actually is something Duke fans should want because the the fewer times you take in Duke, Joe, the better, right? Isn't that where we're kind of at right now? Yeah, I mean, people don't want me to watch, so I probably won't. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll, we'll we'll talk about it a little bit more. So now that NC State's in the Elite Eight, and they'll be playing sometime Sunday afternoon on Easter, we will be doing the show from the Rialto. That's something that will be happening uh, as Hayes and the crew over there will have the game on for free on the big screen. Of course, we encourage you to buy stuff from the Rialto while you're there, uh, buy a shirt, buy some concert tickets, buy some alcohol, hang out. So you'll be back. We'll be here and we'll, uh, we'll try to make that work on Sunday. Uh, anything else that you want to add Joe, before we get out of here? Um, definitely not drunk. I've only had two beers. Oh no, it's 10 15. It's sleepy time for you. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's all it is. I mean, were you on the, were you on the beach at all today? Um, went over at sunset and it was like freezing cold. 
Oh yeah. Um, but no, good setup down here. So all good things. Okay. Totally enjoyable. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I think we're still processing. Like it's just it's just kind of crazy that NC State is done. It's the, again the crazy part to me is the way that they've done it. They've yes. been in control in all of these games for all but the first 10 minutes of the Louisville game and all but like a four minute segment in the final half of the Virginia game, which required the circus shot from O'Connell. But other than that, like it, it and I hate being this guy, but I kind of feel like I have to for the people who are new to the program. I've said it all year long, like the difference between these teams, it really isn't that great. Like, I was talking a little smack about Marquette. The truth of the matter is, you know, Marquette had some good wins this year. They beat some good teams. And they, they got hot early. And I think Kolick's injury at the end of the year kind of derailed them and where they were trying to be. But they're good. You know, obviously, I think UConn, as we said, is the monster. They're the difference. They are. But Carolina, Alabama, Clemson, Arizona – you know, all of these teams, uh, I think it was Cam, our friend who covers Wake Forest, who said, wow, uh, you know, like I think he was making the point about Shaka Smart, about how national people love Shaka Smart, but how Marquette was struggling because they weren't making shots. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how many times have we seen NC State this year not make shots and people were ready to fire Kevin? And it's like, he can't take the shots for them. Oh, dude, I said that, he, you know. I was saying that last night. Uh, you know, it was interesting. Same with Hubert. Whatever was going on right. last night, and we're going to talk. You know, about, we'll talk about that a little bit more. We'll talk about that a little bit more because the way things are going, we'll probably just do our full show tomorrow for Monday show, right? Mm -hmm. Um, at the rate things are going, and I, you know, look, man, I I was kind of arguing with folks about that last night where they were trying to put everything on Hubert. I'm not saying Hubert coached a perfect game. I mean, there were some questions that I'm sure will be processed over time about. Uh, Elliot Cadeau and Seth Trimble and Paxton Wojcik minutes and things like that. And look, man, Jalen Withers probably wants that shot back, but he also made a key play earlier, as Brownlow pointed out, that helped uh, helped him out. But like, what are you going to do? Baycott misses a damn dunk, dude. Like, what are you supposed yeah. to do? It was, a, it was a two point game. He misses also, a dunk. If, if RJ well. Davis hits two threes in this game, things kind of change. What's what's he supposed to do? RJ Davis. I mean, look, Alabama did a good job of cutting off lanes, you know, not allowing RJ to play his game necessarily. But come on, man. You can't have a player of the year like that and expect that kind of night in totality. And again, they lost by two points. What's 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 Hubert Davis supposed to do? Help the ball go in? Like, that's just not how it works. And I said, that's what I said at the beginning and watching Marquette miss all these threes. And I, again, as this is happening, I'm just thinking to myself, I wonder if Kevin Keach is just sitting there going, yeah, Shaka, I know the feeling, dude, because I've seen this shit plenty. I've seen this shit plenty, right? Like, you can't buy a bucket. Yeah, I totally understand, man, because that happens to us. It's happening to you tonight. It is what it is. So uh, I'll give you my pick here, Mike, since we had a pretty good run this week. Um, I think UConn's a monster, and I think Illinois is last year's Alabama. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this as soberly and clearly as I can. <laughs> I, believe in, I believe in karma. Okay. I believe in karma. Um, Brandon Miller had some issues last year. I didn't think Alabama handled them correctly, and it caught up to them. They were the number one overall seed. They were knocked out before the Final Four. Illinois, their star player, has some issues this year. I, I, there's probably more gray area with this one than there was with Brandon Miller, but I believe Illinois is going to get knocked out, and I believe UConn's going to drop the hammer on them. Um, so I would, I would, I'm going to take the Huskies tomorrow. That's that's my play of the day for tomorrow. From uh, from Zach, he he. This is a, another example of how NC State shit is is dead. <laughs> like the law of the wolf does not apply to this game. State stuff is dead. I even wore the shirt today, knowing it would not matter. Hey Joe, did NC State stuff transfer to UNC? Uh, let a no, few. No, no, well, hold on a second. No, hold on a no. second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. It requires more than just a couple of years. It requires a couple more years, but. There is a K curse. I think there's a K curse, but I'm not ready to call it yet. You need okay. like another decade of this, but let's see how the rest of the decade goes. And then I'll be workshopping that. I'll definitely be like, you know, it's like, oh, you might have ended my career in such a fashion, but you'll never win anything. Here's the price. Here's this the price. The price that you paid. 
Yeah. This is the price that you paid. But again, I'm workshopping that because again, it's only been what three years, two years since uh, since that Dude. happened. Speaking of, uh, I can't. What is time, Joe? What is time? I still feel like it's 2003 in my brain. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, it's still a close game. 10-7 right now between Houston and uh, Houston and Duke. So here's what I'm here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go home and watch the rest of this game. Have some thoughts on it. We'll be back on Sunday doing the show from the Rialto. We'll have some more information. We'll put it out there on social media, our Twitter account, um, or our Twitter accounts, our Instagram account, OG Triangle Media. Some quick notes, by the way. Uh, we started with some thanks. We'll end some with thanks. We did hit a milestone today on YouTube where we have a million views um, on YouTube specifically. And then we're approaching 7,000 subscribers, which means when we hit 7,000 subscribers, oh, I no. will, thanks to Amir, drink Is it a logo? Of an OG for loco when we hit 7,000 oh. subscribers. So if you want to see me drink an OG for loco, vintage, retro, um, artisanal, then let's get to 7,000. <laughs> and again, I mentioned the Instagram account. Uh, it's at OG Triangle Media. That's where I put a lot of the clips, reels, those kind of things, little bite sized portions of the show uh, that can, you know, are supposed to entice you to, um, to go check out the rest of the podcast, watch it on YouTube. Throw that a follow as well as we're approaching 4,000 follows on that. I like round numbers, y'all. I like round numbers. Well, you want to workshop some some mugs and some coasters since we did pretty well? <sighs> we need like an we need somebody to create an Etsy shop for us. Okay. okay. We're just I told you this the other day. We're just two people, Joe. Now we do no, have, I, we have I, help. I, like Anna, Anna's a real one over at Sound Off. She helped with those mugs, right? Um, are, are you wearing the bracket luck is real hoodie I gave you? No, you know what sweatshirt I'm wearing. I'm wearing your favorite light blue. There it is. Adidas there it is. sweatshirt. There it is. Anyway, appreciate you. Uh, appreciate everybody who has liked, followed, subscribed, throw five stars on the podcast, positive vibes only, five stars only. We will see you on Sunday night from Rialto. In downtown Raleigh, we'll be doing the show after the game. Uh, hopefully, the Ethernet cable will be ready to go. You ready, Joe? What? I mean, by the time we get to... <laughs> Mike, let's be real. Mike, let's be real. <laughs> by the time we get to... The comment TV, of the day. <laughs> I might not need to shave my head. You know what I mean? Oh. I Mike's on a good one today. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A mug for Roy Cooper that says L.A. for Portland. Damn, First number one seat out, too, I think Damn. Would, would work. Damn. Cold world out there. Cold world. <laughs> all right, we'll see you all Sunday. Mm -hmm.